Welcome back to the discussion of spatial computing. Today we are going to meet Dr. Dev Oliver, uh, who has a computer science PhD, and he works with ESRI, the Environmental Systems Research Institute, a company you have seen before in our lectures. Uh, this company puts out a very popular family of products called ARC GIS and affiliated products, uh, which are used by millions of people in the world. And uh, in some sense, you know, starting mid-1960s, this company has been really spreading the word and popularizing the technology. Okay. So uh, let's, let's come and meet uh, Dev. Okay. Hello, Dev. <laughs> hey, how are you doing? Uh, it, it's very nice to see you again. It's good to see you as well. Thank you for having me. Great, great. And thanks for taking the time to, uh, to talk to all the students in this spatial computing MOOC. I, th I think they can, um, you know, share your enthusiasm about spatial computing and learn about some of the real things that you are doing at ESRI. Okay. So first, I wanted to ask you that, you know, you have a broad computer science background. Uh, how how did you uh, get into spatial computing, and how did you get started there? So from spatial computing, from general computer science to spatial computing, the thing that draw, drew me mm. was the applications mm. that were available. So I remember using routing applications, applications for crime mapping, applications for outlier detection, and so on, and thinking, this is wonderful. I want to understand how these things work and mm. what are the underlying technologies. So that, that was sort of my pull. But wonderful. Um, and recently, you moved uh, to a new area, you know, Redlands, California, with the, you know, as you joined ESRI. Did you get to use any GIS applications during your move? Absolutely. I, I was using Google Maps and the other online services to try to figure out where things are. Okay. Um, in looking for houses, I'm using Zillow. I'm using a lot of different um, spatial technologies that are out there. Okay. Um, so it's just, it's spatial computing is a part of my everyday life. I yeah. can't do anything without, without it, really. Every day I use it. Yeah. Wonderful. So, so now as a uh, spatial computing professional within Inside ESRI, um, what kind of projects are you working on nowadays? So within ESRI, I'm working on two primary projects. Okay. The first has to do with uh, spatial networks. Okay. Um, I'm working on a project called Facility Network. Okay. And basically, it is providing analytic capabilities, indexing uh, database capabilities to utility companies such as uh, electric, water, gas, okay. uh, things of that nature. So. That is one, one aspect I'm working on. I've always been interested in spatial networks, okay. such as road and transportation networks. Now I get to work on spatial networks in a different context, in this okay. case, utility. Okay. And the other project I'm working on is a big data project um, okay. here at ESRI. Um, so how can we sort of scale these things up um, to larger data sets is sort of the, the focus of that project. OK, w wonderful. So spatial networks is something we are discussing in the spatial MOOC, uh, you know, very basic around road networks, how they are modeled, at least from an academic perspective. And I believe you are familiar with uh, the textbook chapter six on spatial network in my book. Uh, so could you maybe say a little bit more on, you know, the way spa the database book, spatial database book describes spatial network and the way uh, ESRI's own software think about spatial network. What are the commonalities and what are some differences? So commonalities would include the way spatial networks are modeled, for instance. Um, uh, you would say you would model it using like a basic underlying graph okay. and so on. But uh, the differences, even in, in, even in the commonalities, there are differences. Okay. Okay. Uh, at ESI, we, they tend to do it, the, the modeling a little bit more richer okay. to try to capture um, uh, different aspects that are important to uh, the utility companies and so on. So an example would be, for instance, um, if you have features that are coincident, okay. usually in a, in a traditional setting, those would be the features that are connected. You go from edge A to B, point A to point B, on an edge to point C. Mm -hmm. But maybe we can bring in other ideas such as logically connecting entities okay. rather than just um, based on their physical coincidence. So 
they are, you know, the, the basics are the same, but there are some other things that, um, some other directions the company are tr is trying to go into as well. That's an example. Wonderful. So maybe another, you know, related questions uh, would be what, what are the software products ESRI puts out to manage spatial networks? Uh, so right now, um, there is a net, there is a geometric network uh, okay. uh, package that's okay. available, um, and uh, I'm currently working on software that is um is not okay. out there as yet, uh, but that was um, previewed at a user conference this year in San Diego. So um, working with geometric networks is a is an example of a software that. We are, um, that's currently out there on the market, but um, it's not the, I'm working on the one that is going to succeed that one kind of, in eventually over time. We'll see. Yeah. By the way, I one. can't really claim anything about the, the products and so on. I, I don't. No, I we, don't, we understand. That's not my <laughs> anger. <laughs> yeah, I understand you may have some restrictions <laughs> on what you can share, but you did mention the user conference, right? Each summer ESRI brings uh, their users together. And I assume you attend this this year. So, how many people were there at that conference, and why should somebody come and attend that? You know. Okay. So this uh, this con if you're into spatial computing, you yeah. want to be at this conference. This yeah. year we had sixteen thousand people. Wow, wow. sixteen thousand. Sixteen thousand. Wow. Yes. Okay. Um, very vast, uh, diverse backgrounds in okay. in um, spatial computing. So. Um, yeah, you want to come just to connect with people. You want to see what the technologies are. You want to understand what the problems that real users are having mm -hmm. um, in, in general, and not just related to ESRI, but just in general, what are the, the real world um, problems you're trying to solve. And this is a great environment for that. Yeah. Yeah. Won wonderful. Going back to the big data project that you're working on, uh, so we just saw that you know White House had an announcement on uh, big data for climate, and in fact Jack Dangermont from ESRI was there, and he pledged a lot of help from ESRI. So can you tell us a little bit more on the spatial big data projects you're working on? Uh, so <laughs> the the current so basically I'm very limited in what I can say about the spatial big data project, only to say that there is an open source. ESRI on Hadoop okay. that is available through GitHub right now, and it offers um, spatial indexing capabilities, spatial okay. uh, data types um, for big data on Hadoop. Wonderful. Um, so that is currently one vein that the team is going in. And so this is GIS on Hadoop, right? This is GIS on, on Hadoop, Hadoop, correct. Wonderful. And this is an active project that's been contributed to. Wonderful. Uh, that would be a good starting place. So, so do you think is that a big uh, or prominent future directions for spatial computing? So in general, I would say yes, okay. that is a prominent spatial direction. How do you, uh, uh, future direction for spatial computing, mm -hmm. how do you draw large quantities of spatiotemporal data? Okay. How do you visualize it? How do you analyze it? These are some of the, the big challenges that are out there in this community right now as I see it. Yeah, great. So what are some other future directions for spatial computing? So there are many, but the, the one that I, I kind of see popping up is sort of these uh, analytics that are tailored towards very specific domains. Okay. And an example would be uh, taking traditional analytics techniques such as hotspots okay. and tailoring them to say road networks or to arbitrary shapes, rings, mm -hmm. polygons, different types of things like that that suit particular domains. So this is sort of um, another angle that I see is, um, is, is coming in the future, or it's probably even here already. Already. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Th thank you so much, Dev. You know, and it's a coincidence that this MOOC also has about 16,000 students, which is roughly similar to the number of people <laughs> <laughs> coming to the user conference. So we really appreciate you taking your time um, and sharing this gorgeous weather in Redlands, California. We can see outdoors picture. <laughs> please, yeah. come, please come to Redlands one yeah. day if you can. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful, and you know, and hopefully, if your time permits, you know, we'll probably get some of your engagement or advice on the discussion group in this MOOC. Thank you, Absolutely. Dev. Absolutely, you're welcome.